Thanks for watching News 12 on your side. Live from Augusta, you're watching News 12 live at 5. A story of found family tonight after two women more than a thousand miles apart learned they share something very special in common. We'll have that story for you in just a few minutes. But first, Riley, we've had some rain roll through our area today. Do you think this will pose a threat to any of our Friday night football games? Kickoff start, what, just a couple of hours from now? Yeah, we're about two and a half hours away from kickoff, and we are still tracking some showers and even thunderstorms tracking across the area. So I would say if you're going to be out and about within the next two to three hours, I would anticipate that you could see a passing shower or thunderstorm. Now, you can see those rain chances really drop off the table once we get an hour or so past sunset. So not expecting this to last too much longer, but just a few storms out there, and we're in there entering an environment now that could be conducive maybe to produce some strong wind gusts. So that's going to be the main concern with them, all thanks to this cold front. So this has finally showed up for us. And if you're watching yesterday, we were calling maybe for a few stray severe thunderstorms out there. And you can see along that I-95 corridor, that is currently where the severe weather is staying. But starting to see this line get a little bit better organized, and this is starting to work its way into the northern CSRA, so up towards Clarksville lake uh, portions of wilkes county and it is getting closer towards i-20 so this is the rain that is heading towards us once this wave moves south and east of you you should stay dry the rest of this evening and tonight so we're really just going to have to monitor that stuff north of us so if you're heading out to those high school football games maybe you're heading out to the fair temperatures right now in the 70s and 60s and just going to have to uh, watch out for maybe a hit or miss downpour out there we'll have much more on this forecast in just a bit but let's get a quick update on your first alert traffic and now First alert track. Here's a live look at I-20 and Riverwatch Parkway. And you can see traffic here on the eastbound lane of I-20 is slow moving. So a heads up if you are crossing the state line, uh, definitely not moving too quickly at the moment. Westbound lane doesn't appear to be impacted too much. Looking over Grove Town next, you can see uh, less traffic here on the Lewiston Road and I-20 corridor. We'll have much more on the rain threat the rest of this evening and that weekend forecast in just about 10 minutes. All right, thanks for that, Riley. Two strangers from opposite ends of the country have one very special thing in common. Janelle Dawson's husband died in 2016 and donated his organs. Across the country was a young mother who desperately needed a knee transplant. They eventually got in touch with one another and became fast friends. Now, these two ladies consider themselves family. Our Sydney Hood joins us now live in our newsroom in Sydney. Walk us through what it was like for these two women to finally meet one another in person. Well, looking at these two, you would think that they were lifelong friends. They chat like girlfriends, and they love each other like sisters. But like we said, it wasn't too long ago, they were complete strangers. These two came into each other's lives when they were both at their lowest. Janelle's husband died back in 2016, and at the same time, Lily Luby received the news that she needed a knee transplant. And at the time, the odds of her finding a match were against her until she got that phone call of a lifetime there was a match the match was janelle's husband now these two unlikely friends have something special that will forever bond them the connection that i needed when you're mourning like that um, any connection you have to that person is huge but you know the fact that i have her um him through her um as well was just all anyone could hope for Really. And coming up on new tonight on News 12 at 6 o'clock, that special moment when these two finally laid eyes on each other for the very first time and how they've become family just from one simple and life-changing donation. Oh, thanks, Sydney. That is such a priceless story, something so wonderful coming out of something so tragic. A new order from South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster. It is intended to ensure inmates aren't illegally released early from South Carolina prisons. But tonight, some are questioning if the governor has the authority to issue it or if he's overstepping his power. Our state house reporter Mary Green has those details. Governor McMaster is now directing South Carolina solicitors to give the Attorney General 10 days notice before filing any early release motions for inmates. 
He says that's intended to give the Attorney General's office time to review these motions and determine if those early releases are legal before any inmates are let out. In this letter the governor sent solicitors Thursday, McMaster writes, Unfortunately, recent events have revealed that it is not sufficient simply to arrest, convict, and incarcerate criminals, but we must also ensure that they stay in prison. The new order stems from an incident earlier this year surrounding convicted murderer Gerard Price. A secret early release order signed by a since-retired judge and agreed to by the Richland County solicitor set Price free from prison 16 years early this past March. Days later, the state Supreme Court ruled his release was not legal, sparking a nearly three-month-long search for Price, who was eventually found in New York and returned to custody. The governor cites the state constitution and state Supreme Court rulings as his authority for issuing this new order. Solicitor David Pasco disagrees that the governor can instruct the attorney general and solicitors on how to handle criminal matters. I don't want to get into a dispute with the governor because we're on the same side on this issue. He is 100% right, and I appreciate his leadership in calling out the Gerard Price case. Pasco believes reforming the way South Carolina picks its judges is the final resolution here. We've got to get judicial reform in this state, and I'm glad that the governor and the attorney general are with the solicitors are doing that. Price's attorney, South Carolina House Democratic leader Todd Rutherford, firmly believes the governor is overstepping his authority. It's like a Game of Thrones, but none of it to me is valid. And none of it should be valid for these solicitors who are elected by the people in their counties, in their circuits, to do the job of prosecuting cases. Rutherford also sits on the 10-person panel that screens judicial candidates and disagrees with Pasco's belief about judicial reform. But he says he's concerned this order could open the door for the governor to try to direct solicitors on how and when to prosecute cases. So now the governor's going to tell the attorney general and the solicitors what to do? It's disturbing, and I think other people should be outraged by it as well. What we don't have is a king, and I think that the governor is trying to assert himself as king here. The governor's office declined to respond to Rutherford's comments. Pasco told me he doesn't share Rutherford's concerns and says he's been reassured by the governor's staff that wouldn't happen. Reporting from the State House, I'm Mary Green. Earlier this year, the governor also directed the Department of Corrections to alert the attorney general of any early release orders it suspects could be illegal. Pasco says he thinks that's another move that could prevent another situation like prices from playing out. What started out as an apartment fire in Gwinnett County, it is now turned into a murder investigation. Yesterday morning, first responders say they responded to two small fires. And they found a six-year-old boy with multiple stab wounds. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. Now, while investigating, police say they found a woman behind a building with no shoes and wet clothes. She lived in the same unit as the boy, and police believe they might be related. She was taken to the hospital with minor injuries and will be questioned. The boy's death is still under investigation tonight. The cold case death of a little nine-year-old girl has come to an end more than 50 years later. Nine-year-old Debbie Lynn Randall was murdered in Georgia in 1972, but her murderer was never identified until last month. With new DNA technology, they now believe a 24-year-old man that died by suicide in 1974 is her killer. Now that Debbie's case can be put to rest, a butterfly memorial garden has been dedicated for Debbie. Legacy that lives on for Debbie Lynn Randall. It lives on through the generations upon generations of girls and women who are past, present, and future for Girls, Inc. And so today, as we stand here, we will remember. Among those in attendance at the dedication was now retired detective, the one who worked on Debbie's case and Debbie's surviving family. Growing frustrations tonight from parents and students after the Richland County School District decided to reassign at least eight teachers over fall break. The school district has acknowledged that while unfortunate, this is something that's happened for decades, and it's meant to balance out teacher-to-student ratios. Parents say this is not the right way to go about things because the teachers and their students did not get a chance to say goodbye. This is my teacher, and she just makes learning fun. I'm just really disappointed about this. This was just, it's like they just yanked their teachers away with no warning, no communication to anyone. 
the way they treated the, the teachers and doing it, they didn't even get to go back and say goodbye to their students. Some parents believe this action by the district could worsen its teacher shortage. The school district currently has 148 teacher vacancies. A woman finding her newly purchased home already has people living inside. Just ahead, you'll see how all of this unfolded, Riley. Well, we are still keeping an eye on a few showers and thunderstorms that will linger in the portions of this evening. We'll have a look at that full forecast just after the break. Time and temp brought to you. Welcome back, folks. Here's a live look from our Thurman Dam Cam. You can see our anemometer. It is blowing pretty good up there up at the lake and definitely spinning it around. You can see there on the horizon some darker skies. This is where we are tracking some showers and storms that are dropping south closer towards I-20. So if you're up towards the lake, I would definitely seek safe harbor. There is going to be the opportunity for some lightning strikes with those uh, downpours pushing through. Right now we're seeing our temps hit the mid-70s, a good steady west wind at about 16 miles an hour. So definitely a little bit breezy out there. Here's a wide look at what's going on. So this was our morning wave that pushed through earlier into the day that's now pushing closer towards the coast. This is going to be our second wave we have to deal with over the next several hours. So that will stick around up until around, say, 8, 9 o'clock. And then once we uh, continue to push later into tonight, it does clear out. Now, the thing is, once this uh, uh, just round of rain pushes east and south of you, then you're done with the rain for the night. So our northern CS Ray County, since you're seeing the rain right now, anything you got playing the rest of the evening should stay completely dry. These will show up for us here around the Augusta to corridor pretty much now through at least around six seven o'clock and then we should see those storms drop south of us and drying out as we get towards uh, sunset so it's not going to be an all evening rain for everybody just going to have to keep an eye on these dropping uh, northwest towards the southeast so pretty heavy rain stretching across that i-20 corridor through mcduffie warren tolliver county and now even starting to show up in portions of columbia county so rain chances 30 percent or less so they'll be very hit or miss just kind of dropping through the region once we get past around 9, 10 o'clock, looking to stay pretty dry for us heading into the weekend. Now, if you do are heading out to those high school football games, this round of rainfall is going to push through most of the area. So I'd at least take a towel to wipe off the bleachers and take a look at our first alert weather radar. You can put that in your app and see if that rain is now east of you or if you still have to deal with it uh, if you need to bring an umbrella to game time. But temperature-wise, we should stay to the 60s out there for the rest of this evening and tonight. Nice weekend on tap. We're going to see beautiful conditions Saturday and Sunday. Still going to be a little bit breezy out there Saturday, but temperature-wise, very seasonal. Mid and upper 70s both afternoons this weekend, so we're not really going to see a big temperature drop uh, behind this cold front moving through this evening and tonight. We do have the Augusta Duck Dash tomorrow morning. That's going to start off at 10 a.m. at Savannah Rapids Pavilion. Actual duck race will be around noontime and going to last until around 1 o'clock. Beautiful weather, though. 50s around 10 a.m., working our way to the 60s by lunchtime, and just a little bit breezy at times out there tomorrow afternoon, but beautiful weather on the canal. Uh, a lot of us here from News 12 are going to be out there tomorrow morning. Love to see you out there and definitely going towards a great cause. Lake forecast, not too bad either. Sunny skies Saturday and Sunday, just still a little bit breezy Saturday, so may have to deal with a little bit of a chop out there. Once we get past the weekend, we are seeing beautiful weather next week. Highs in the low 70s and mornings a little bit cooler in the mid-40s. All right, thanks for that, Riley. For years, hotels in Augusta have complained about hotel guests who turn into squatters. There is a long and oftentimes tedious process of getting these people removed, especially once they register a child for school from a hotel address or maybe they register to vote. Well, a similar situation now happening to a Georgia woman whose dream home purchased turned into a nightmare when she says she was locked out by someone squatting inside. Adam Murphy shows us what happened next. That's just completely unacceptable. I mean, I can't believe that this can happen in this community. Jennifer Herrera never imagined that purchasing her dream home would become her worst nightmare. She bought this house on Cliff Creek Court in Smyrna two weeks ago. But before she could move in, she found herself locked out. I was terrified because I realized there was someone in the house. I went directly and asked my husband and the previous homeowner, look, is there anyone who thinks they have the right to be in this house that would have, you know, uh, a code to the garage or anything? And they both said no, so I was like, I'm calling the police. According to the initial police report, a man by the name of Ojinga Thompson said he entered into a lease agreement to rent the home, even though Herrera owned it and had the deed to prove it. They somehow moved in and changed the locks. Sir, sir. Atlanta
Avenue's first tracked down Thompson, pulling into the Smyrna home earlier this week. So are you living here? Um, I was scammed here. I was told that I was able to move in and I was able to, I had got given a lease and everything and then got scammed out of my money and everything. Thompson said he found the property on Facebook and even provided us with the landlord's name and address in Locust Grove. So we checked, and there was no landlord at the address he provided. This isn't your house. You know that, right? Yes, I actually know that, but I'm not sitting here trying to pick her house from her. I'm trying to get myself out of here and my family out of here also. Thompson and others were seen living in the home even after we started asking questions. That prompted Herrera to have the water that she was paying for turned off. Soon after, a neighbor photographed him messing with the meter, and that was enough for the mayor to get involved. And I would say to all of those who do this kind of thing in other communities, Cobb County and Smyrna is not open for business. As a result, police moved in and arrested Thompson. We spoke with Smyrna police, and they said they charged Thompson with theft of services and tampering with government property in connection with the water meter. I mean, right now I'm just angry and disgusted, you know, and this is a home that I intend to love and respect and take good care of, just like the former owners did. Herrera was finally able to move into her dream home just after two weeks. Crazy, right? Well, coming up, we're getting a special behind-the-scenes tour at a massive new hub for movies and TV shows about to open right here in the Peach State. Don't go anywhere. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. It's a great time to get your lawn in shape with a new mower from Davis Appliance and Furniture. We offer no credit needed financing and delivery options to meet your needs. For the brands you trust at the lowest prices in town, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. It's the perfect time to update your living space with a new sofa and love seat set from Davis Appliance and Furniture. Or update your indoor appliances with no credit needed financing. For the brands you trust at the lowest prices in town, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. This weekend, Assembly Atlanta will officially open. It's a 135-acre mixed-use property with 19 different sound stages and studio buildings for future movie and TV show filming. Tracy Hutchins got an inside look at how that vision is becoming clearer with Gray Television CEO Hilton Howell. It is clear Assembly Studios is nearly complete. Great Television CEO Hilton Howell is like a kid in a candy store. Just the balconies just give you a view of things that's amazing. And then this is New Orleans. I love it. There are 19 sound stages across eight studio buildings. On the outside, movie makers can use the facades to transport you to the French Quarter in New Orleans, try back in New York, or across the pond to Europe. As soon as they're ready to go, we are. And inside, every sofa is on sale. It's the perfect time to update your living space with a new sofa and love seat set from Davis Appliance and Furniture. Or update your indoor appliances with no credit needed financing. For the brands you trust at the lowest prices in town, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. This weekend, Assembly Atlanta will officially open. It's a 135-acre mixed-use property with 19 different sound stages and studio buildings for future movie and TV show filming. Tracy Hutchins got an inside look at how that vision is becoming clearer with Great Television CEO Hilton Howell. It is clear Assembly Studios is nearly complete. Great Television CEO Hilton Howell is like a kid in a candy store. Just the balconies just give you a view of things that's amazing. And then this is New Orleans. I love it. There are 19 sound stages across eight studio buildings. On the outside, movie makers can use the facades to transport you to the French Quarter in New Orleans, try back in New York, or across the pond to Europe. As soon as they're ready to go, we are. And inside, offices, wardrobe rooms. Oh my gosh, it's huge! A massive makeup room and dressing rooms, too. There's gonna be a TV in every room, trust me. So, and you have any dressing rooms, are No, there are dressing rooms. All the way along this front side. But Just steps away from the sound stage. I do want you to walk carefully because these are going up, but there's nothing going up about us here. So let's go straight across. Beyond the back lot of Brown Jewel atop one of two reflective buildings. This is um, translucent onyx. And it is backlit and it runs 
almost really three floors because the top floor is over 18 feet tall. And so it runs from right here all the way to the top, way above the roof. I was one of the first to walk on the southern circular staircase to what's become known as the jewel box. These are lit bronze inlays, and they will cover the top and come down the sides. And then that's the view out for the all of Assembly Atlanta. An indoor-outdoor space for film and television wrap parties. I'm excited because we're honoring the past. We're creating a new and exciting future, and it's going to create even more jobs than General Motors did. I'm very excited about that. The livelihoods and what this is going to be able to do. You know, I think I've been quoted, we're going to have a billion coming out of here. I hope more than that, but we'll see. I think it's going to be great for everybody. Coming right along, the grand opening gala for Atlanta Assembly will be tomorrow evening. There will be some pretty big names in the worlds of music and acting. We will stream a live red carpet preview tomorrow evening on My 12. And this weekend, take a step back in time for Colonial Times, a day to remember. It's happening in North Augusta. Historical reenactors will provide a glimpse into the past when the British were in control of the colonies. This will be a free event Saturday and Sunday at the North Augusta Living History Park. It's from 9 to 5 both days. Riley? Well, we have a very cool view from our Thurman Dam Camp showing the rain moving in across Clarks Hill Lake. This is starting to drop south closer towards the dam, and we're going to be next in line here in Augusta. Now look at radar in the forecast for you just after break. Vote for change, vote for big. Hey, it's Anna Christina here, inviting you to take advantage of our spooky good savings this Halloween season on our mattress and furniture sale. All of our current inventory of Beautyrest, Tempur-Pedic, Sierra Sleep, and Stearns and Foster will be up to $1,000 off per mattress. As always, we offer 36 months of interest-free financing for all your furniture needs. Two miles off exit 190 on the corner of Horizon South Parkway. Jimmy and his son Alex want to thank you for supporting your local furniture store. Jimmy's Home Furnishings, where it feels like home. A Georgia Girl Scout is being honored for saving her little brother's life. Back in May, seven-year-old Evelyn Wisnat's brother fell into a five-foot deep pool. That's about how tall Evelyn is, but that did not stop her from jumping in, keeping his head above water, and getting the attention of the adults. I saved my brother's life, and that Girl Scout is very proud of me. That they are. Evelyn was given the Girl Scout National Medal of Honor for her bravery. That is the highest award in the Scouts. The mayor of Columbus was at the ceremony, too, so he could congratulate her for living up to the Girl Scout motto of always be prepared. Riley, that's a great big sister. That is a great big sister, and she definitely deserved uh, that award. The top one in the Scouts, uh, so pretty impressive, and uh, she definitely deserved it. Here's a live look from our Thurman Dam Cam, and we are starting to see the raindrops on the lens now. So rain is moving across Clarkson Lake. This is dropping south and east, so it is going to start impacting areas closer towards Augusta, and we are expecting uh, this to continue at least around 9, 10 o'clock across the region. So make sure you do have the rain gear handy if you are stepping out this evening. Luckily, if Beautiful weather on tap this weekend. All right, thanks for that, Riley. Much more to come on News 12 Live at 5. Don't go anywhere. We're back in a bit.